Hagrid looked at Harry with warmth and respect blazing in his eyes. But Harry, instead of feeling pleased and proud, felt quite sure there had been a horrible mistake. A wizard? Him? How could he possibly be? He'd spent his life being clouded by Dudley and bullied by Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon. If he was really a wizard, why hadn't they been turned into warty toads every time they tried to lock him in his cupboard? If he'd once defeated the greatest sorcerer in the world, how come Dudley had always been able to kick him around like a football? Hagrid, he said quietly, I think you must have made a mistake. I don't think I can be a wizard. To his surprise, Hagrid chuckled. Not a wizard, eh? Never made things happen when you were scared or angry. Harry looked into the fire. Now he came to think about it. Every odd thing that is that had ever made his aunt and uncle furious with him had happened when he, Harry, had been upset or angry. Chased by Dudley's gang, he had somehow found himself out of their reach. Dreading going to school with that ridiculous haircut, he'd managed to make it grow back. And the very last time Dudley had hit him, hadn't he got his revenge without even realizing he was doing it? Hadn't he set a boa constrictor on him? Harry looked back at Hagrid, smiling, and saw that Hagrid was positively beaming at him. See, said Hagrid, Harry Potter, not a wizard. You wait, you'll be right famous at Hogwarts. But Uncle Vern wasn't going to give in without a fight. Haven't I told you he's not going? He hissed. He's going to Stonewall High, and he'll be grateful for it. I've read those letters, and he needs all sorts of rubbish. Spell books and wands, and... If he wants to go, a great muggle like you won't stop him, growled Hagrid. Stop Lily and Jane Potter's son from going to Hogwarts? You're mad. His name been down ever since he was born. He's off to the finest school of witchcraft and wizardry in the world. Seven years there, and he won't know himself. He'll be with youngsters of his own sort for a change, and he'll be under the greatest headmaster Hogwarts ever had. Elbus Dumble. I am not paying for some crackpot old fool to teach him magic tricks, yelled Uncle Vernon. But he had finally gone too far. Hagrid seized his umbrella and whirled it over his head. Never, he thundered. Insult Alibus Dumbledore in front of me. He brought the umbrella swishing down through the air to point at Dudley. There was a flash of violet light, a sound like a firecracker a sharp squeal, and next second, Dudley was dancing on the spot with his hands clasped over his fat bottom, howling in pain. When he turned his back on them, Harry saw a curly pig's tail poking through a hole in his trousers. Uncle Vernon roared, pulling Aunt Petunia and Dudley into the other room. He cast one last terrified look at Hagrid and slammed the door behind them. Hagrid looked down at his umbrella and stroked his beard. Shouldn't have lost me temper, he said ruefully. But it didn't work anyway. Meant to turn him into a pig. But I suppose he was so much like a pig anyway, there wasn't much left to do. He cast a sideways look at Harry under his bushy eyebrows. Be grateful if you didn't mention that to anyone at Hogwarts, he said. I'm... Er, not supposed to do magic, strictly speaking. I was allowed to do a little bit to follow you and get your letters and your and stuff. One of the reasons I was so keen to take the job. Why aren't you supposed to do magic? asked Harry. Oh, well, I was at Hogwarts myself, but I er, got expelled, to tell you the truth. In the third year, they snapped me one and half and everything. But Dumbledore let me stay on as gameskeeper. Great man, Dumbledore. Why were you expelled? 
It's getting late and we've got lots to do tomorrow, said Haggard loudly. Gotta get up to town and get your books and that. He took off his thick black coat and threw it to Harry. You can keep under that, he said. Don't mind if it wriggles a bit. I think I still got a couple of Doramice and up in one of them pockets. Chapter 5 Diagon Alley Harry woke early the next morning. Although he could tell it was daylight, he kept his eyes shut tight. It was a dream, he told himself firmly. I dreamt a giant called Hagrid came to me to tell me I was going to a school for wizards. When I open my eyes, I'll be at home in my cupboard. There was suddenly a loud tapping noise. And there's Aunt Petunia knocking on the door, Harry thought, his heart sinking. But he didn't open his eyes. He had been, it had been such a good dream. Tap, tap, tap. All right, Harry mumbled, I'm getting up. He sat up and Hagrid's heavy coat fell off him. The hut was full of sunlight. The storm was over. Hagrid himself was asleep on the collapsed sofa and there was an owl wrapping its claw on the window. A newspaper held in its beak. Harry scrambled to his feet, so happy. He felt as though a large balloon was swelling inside him. He went straight to the window and jerked it open. The owl swooped in and dropped the newspaper on top of Hagrid, who didn't wake up. The owl then fluttered onto the floor and began to attack Hagrid's coat. Don't do that. Harry tried to wave the owl out of the way, but it snapped its beak fiercely at him and carried on savaging the coat. Hagrid, said Harry loudly, there's an owl. Pam, Hagrid grunted into the sofa. What? He wants pain for delivering the paper. Look in the pockets. Hagrid's coat seemed to be made of nothing but pockets. Bunches of keys, slug pelts, balls of string, mint, humbugs, tea bags. Finally, Harry pulled out a handful of strange looking coins. Give him five canuts, said Hagrid sleepily. Canuts? The little bronze ones. Harry counted out five little bronze coins, and the owl held out its leg so he could put the money into a small leather pouch tied to it. Then it flew off through the open window. Hagrid yawned loudly, sat up and stretched. Best be off, Harry. Lots to do today. Gotta get up to London and buy all your stuff for school. Harry was turning over the wizard coins and looking at them. He had just thought of something which made him feel as though the happy balloon inside him had got a puncture. Um, Hagrid. Hmm? said Hagrid, who was pulling on his huge boots. I haven't got any money. And you heard Uncle Vernon last night. He won't pay for me to go and learn magic. Don't worry about that, said Hagrid, standing up and scratching his head. Do you think your parents didn't leave you anything? But if their house was destroyed, they didn't keep their gold in the house, boy. Nah. First stop for us is Gringotts, Wizard's Bank. Have a sausage. They're not bad cold. And I wouldn't say no to a bit of your birthday cake, neither. Wizards have banks? Just the one, Gringotts, run by goblins. Harry dropped the bit of sausage he was holding. Goblins? Yeah, so you'd be mad to try and rob it, I'll tell you that. Never mess with goblins, Harry. Gringotts is the safest place in the world for anything you want to keep safe, except maybe Hogwarts. As a matter of fact, I gotta visit Gringotts anyway for Dumbledore, Hogwarts business. Hagrid drew himself up proudly. He usually gets me to do important stuff for him. Fetching, you know, getting things from Gringotts. Knows he can trust me, see? Got everything? Come on, then.